Hello, friends. I'm here with the lovely Stacy, and trying to reduce my volume over and over. Um, we are. Oh my gosh, why are you not silent? Sorry, I'm trying to get my iPad going so y'all can ask questions. I still have not figured out how to do all of the multi things on everything yet, but soon. All right, so all I've done so far is just zip off her color layer. And there we go, need some light. And uh, so this deletes all the time. And if you don't touch it now and then, the comments delete. It's really annoying, they need to fix it. So if something pops up, you can read it. Hello, Jody and Terry. All right, so I am going to basically be doing my nails on her. She likes what I got going on. So she's like, I'll just take what you have. So I'm like, all right, well, let's video it because I know people want to see how these are done. I've had some questions on that. So, you know I'm here for foils. Hey, Terry. Yes. So, Terry is an old client of mine, and she goes elsewhere now because she lives many, many, many states away. So, if she goes somewhere new, she has to tell them how to do what she wants. Hey, Jada. Has anyone figured out how to make uh, the comments area on a video not just randomly delete all the comments because it's just rude that that's the new feature of Facebook and it's dumb. So as you can see, she's got the more difficult cuticles that don't really wanna push down. So this is where using that bit that I'm about to use is gonna come real in handy because it's they're like glued to her fingers and can't get them down at all. Um, and so using that bit's gonna help us get those cuticles back correctly. So we are going to go ahead and move to that. Hello, Jada. All right, so I'm going to use my favorite little bit. This is the 2S bit. This is the bit I always use. And she does have really thin cuticles, so I'm gonna try to just baby around it, but you gotta get those lifted up because as you could see, they were really glued on, right? So I'm gonna pull her skin away right here and I'm gonna up the speed a little bit cause I wanna make sure that it's not gonna pull on anything. And you see how that's just working that right off of her nail beautifully. And then this shape, why do I use a football? Because if you look at the shape, it really mirrors the shape of the nail bed. You don't get, if you have a straight bit, a lot of times I feel like it's too easy to create um, a flat portion on the nail and a ring of fire. So this bit is a miracle bit. I need to get more in stock. I am down to my last few, so I will be placing an order with Bruce right away. So you can see I'm just kind of babying this. I always get the same questions as far as what speed am I going and things like that. I use a foot pedal, so I am a very variable speed. You can hear it. I can slow let down completely. I can turn it up without moving my hands at all because it's like driving a car. So it's very easy to change your speed. You don't think about, you know, when you're driving, oh, I have to push the foot pedal down. It's just kind of like your mind just does it when you want to slow down. Same thing with this. When I want to slow down, my mind's just going to naturally just lift off that foot pedal. Um, it's the Koopa 5000 machine that does that. Um, and you can choose a couple different hand pieces. I like the KP60. It's the newest, smallest, most beautiful little tiny hand piece. And for someone like me, I have very small hands. It's great. If you have larger hands and you like, it, like a larger hand piece to hold, then the KP, I believe 55, is just slightly larger in the hand, okay? So you can see how that lifted that up really nicely and got in there for all that cuticle that likes to just stay really good and cemented on the nail. Hey, Nicole, you found me. Nicole was asking for a video. All right, I'm just gonna get rid of this real quick because it's like flapping in the wind. All right, so again, I'm pushing the speed up. Probably, it's not all the way, but I'm probably guessing it's probably around 25 right now. Um, just to get in there real smooth. And the slower you go, it's not, 
I don't know. I like to go up a little bit higher when I'm dealing with cuticles that are really stuck on like this. And I'm just very lightly feathering them up off of the nail. This is how you're gonna get a really good prep. If you don't get that cuticle off the nail, you end up with more of a problem possibly with lifting. So this really lifts that up. It also lets your client have better grow out. They're gonna get a week's extra grow out before um, their nails are showing that their nails are growing out. So getting all this taken care of is super helpful. Anyone say anything? Oh, yes, you can read that. You can read it out loud so oh. you can tell me. <laughs> Hello, Jessica. I wanted to ask you the difference between the enhanced comma balance and trinity on the different work on nails. So enhance, trinity, and balance, they're all part of the performance line. Trinity is the newest one. It's the three-in-one. It has the base gel or your bonding gel. It has your strength and it has your top gloss in one. Before they came out with that, the original big three were enhance, balance, and structure. They're all made for building a nail, but they're all different viscosities or thicknesses. Structure is your thickest viscosity. It's extremely thick. It's not going to self-level at all. Great if you want to build a long extension out in one big dollop, okay? Um, balance is in the middle between that and Enhance. Enhance is a much thinner viscosity, very similar to what you have with Trinity. They're very, very similar. So that little piece that I nipped earlier is still in there. Okay. So Enhance and Trinity, they're very similar in viscosity. Um, when they came out with Trinity, it, it wasn't necessarily made to replace Enhance, but it can replace Enhance because uh, Enhance and Trinity are very similar in viscosity. So a lot of people that used Enhance maybe went to Trinity because then they don't need to put a base gel on because you do need to put bonding gel or Adhere, which is the bonding gel for the performance line, underneath your enhance, your balance, or your structure, but you don't need it under your trinity. Um, that being said, enhance has a translucent pink and all of the trinity colors are a semi-opaque of pink. So the pinks are very different when it comes to that. Um, so can you do what I do with enhance because it's extremely similar in viscosity? Absolutely, but you have to do the extra steps. You're gonna need to put down adhere or a bonding gel. Um, whereas Trinity just works perfectly without anything else, any other prep products, you just go straight to your Trinity. So just cleaning all this up. So that's the difference. I know in a video at some point I got them all out and I kind of showed the viscosities of the differences, but I'm not sure which video that was, honestly. I should kind of just do a video just on explaining that, but I'm not sure if I have or not. It's a lovely little hangnail. Get rid of that. And I have people often ask me what nippers I use. Um, these are the Stalix. This one's the Smart 30, uh, the five millimeter. I love the ones with the spring. Um, I find the ones that clamp together in the middle, I know they're super popular, but they come apart um, too easily for me and then it drives me crazy because I'm constantly like having to like put them back together. Um, whereas the spring, they never do that and they still have that same kind of, it stays open until you push it. So same idea, but you're never having to actually like put them back together, which I'm a big fan of. Hello, hello everyone joining in. So we are finishing out her prep here. And then we're gonna shape and file her nails down. So, um, sorry, I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Okay, so one of the things someone did ask is they wanted to see what the nails look like after I removed the old color and the product and the thickness. You guys can see they're actually quite thin, right? I'm not leaving a ton of product on there. One of the biggest problems I see is that people take the color off, but then they don't debulk it at all. And if they had put too much of the clear on last time, they now have way too much. So I just have a very thin layer of Trinity protecting the natural nail and that's it. Okay, that 
is what it looks like before I file it. Now I'm gonna be filing it, so it's gonna get even thinner. And there's just gonna be a very, very thin layer left. All right, prep in your file. So new file, always remove the edges because if you don't, that's how you end up with cutting people. So use an old file. And I really pull, I pull the grit off like this with an old file. Just to remove, you can see that line there of that grit being gone. There's a line of it not being gone. Now you can see the line where it is gone, okay? That's how you're gonna prevent cutting people. When I did my own nails for years in college, I didn't know to how to prep files. I didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know, I didn't know. So I would do my own nails and then I would end up with cuts all over my fingers after I did them. So then I would go as long as I could between doing them because A, it takes forever to do your own nails and B, I didn't want my fingers all cut up anymore. So when the got to nail school and we had a nail tech teacher for, I don't know, three days, I think. And the first thing she did was she was up there and she was prepping a file and I raised my hand. I'm like, excuse me, can you tell me what you're doing? And she's like, oh, I'm just prepping this file so that if I do a nail, it doesn't cut anybody. I'm like, oh my gosh. That's all I needed to do all this time, and I didn't even know. So that was really the only thing I learned in nail school, which is sad, and I know that's not um, unusual because nail schools can be not the greatest place for learning anything. All right, so I'm shaping these back down to the square, and I've thinned out the, fr the free edge and everything, so blending in her old growth, I just massage with my file all of her new growth because there's more than just the little tiny bit that I prepped. And you can see the difference, okay? I want them to look like this when they're completely prepped. And just because I use that bit to prep the cuticles, it's not completely prepped. And if you want your clients to be able to go for a month without lifting or problems, it's good. All right, you can read if you have a new comment. Uh, from Nicole, I've been waiting for this lot uh for this live and glad i caught the live i wanted to get your explanation about the base tree coat and color layers you know when you say to apply a week old space with the clear trinity yes you want to do that with all of them so the reason is is because um if you leave that little bit of a gap and then you do your color layer next your color falls into that gap and that gap doesn't stay there, but if you have a layer of clear product and then your layer of color, you're creating more thickness at the cuticle area than you need. You know, your Trinity is your structure layer, but you don't need strength way back here, right at the cuticle. You, What you want is a thin um, grow out so that as your client is growing their nails out, they don't have this huge ledge as it grows out. So you let that kind of, that color kind of fall to the back and that creates the smoothest transition between their natural nail and your color. Jada wants to know what foils you're wearing. They look like bandanas. I'm gonna show you. That's what I'm doing in this video is we are redoing my nails basically. So I will be showing you guys, I'll be getting that out and showing you guys which ones I'm doing. Um, it's my favorite box, box of foils. I did one out of it yesterday for my mom. I almost took her picture and then my next person was waiting, so I didn't, which is why I don't take pictures 90% of the time. <laughs> um, but with mine, I added just a smidge of extra glitter, so it takes a couple extra minutes to go through and just touch it with some glitter. I did my mom's yesterday, and I did the same thing. I added a little bit of gold glitter onto hers, and she's a quilter, and she's like, oh, they look like fabric. It's very cute. But yeah, I should have taken a picture. Maybe I'll take a picture when she comes back in a month. Or if I end up doing it on somebody else. So I'm using 100, 180, and I kind of flip between the 100 and the 180 side. Um, I don't need to take a lot off with this, so I do use the 180 side quite a bit. And these are the zebra files from Accents, and I'm just thinning out the free edge. I always want to create the right shape. So even though I'm not creating an arch, there's always going to be a little product there. And you can kind of create that arch with how you're filing the nail. So her nails do naturally go like this. So I try to balance them out just a little bit so that they don't look too much like it. Look at it. 
beach. Kim, my college roommate's watching. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Hello, college roommate. We figured we'd tag Stacy, and that way, if any of her friends saw it, they could see her getting her nails done. Because why not? And then you know how to uh, what to ask for when you go get your nails done. So again, I'm filing at an angle down. This allows me to thin out any product right on the free edge. And it is going to give a little bit of a shape to the nail. She naturally has quite an arch down. So I always am bringing it up a little bit on the sides just to counteract that. But you can look at it from the side, see how hers just scoop right down. So I'm just going to bring her little scoopiness up, which will technically make them a little bit tapered, but we like that. We wanna bring it a little bit tapered because even if you do square nails, once you start adding product to them, if they're not tapered at all, they're gonna look flared. We definitely don't want flared nails. So if you taper them in a little bit, then you're gonna end up with more of that square shape at the end anyway. Nicole's asking, when would you use the pro? Performance Ultra Gloss instead of the Lexio or Options. Yes, so Ultra Gloss you want to use on any clients who tan or stain their nails. So your hairstylists, people like who like to self-tan. If they're going on vacation and they tend to use bronzers in their tanning stuff and they're going to stain their nails, this is when you want to use your Ultra Gloss for sure. Okay, that's when. Otherwise, I just typically use Lexio Gloss. Um, but some people would prefer glossing with a brush as opposed to a bottle. So they use a lot of like ultra gloss almost all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you have a base of a hard gel, ultra gloss is a hard gel, which means if you put it over just a standard gel manicure that has no structure under it. So Trinity is our structure. Um, if you have no structured gel and you're literally just doing like a gel polish base coat and your color and trying to do ultra gloss on top of that, you're gonna see shattering. Um, this is because the natural nails are very flexible. And if you don't have a structure gel under your color, that's gonna give it a little bit of strength. Natural nails are gonna bend and it's gonna crack that ultra gloss. So as long as you're doing it like a 30 day manicure, like what I'm doing, it's perfectly fine. It's only if you're trying to do it on just a standard base coat that you're gonna see shattering. So always do your base coat with Trinity and you will have no problems whatsoever. It's the best way anyway. There's there's no reason to do a standard gel manicure unless someone is planning to soak it off later. Um, and I don't recommend having clients that soak off their nails all the time. I know that there's nail techs that do it. No problem. Do what you want to do. You do you. I don't recommend it because what happens is, is a lot of times customers will be like, oh, my nails are getting really thin from soaking off all the time. I need a break. So if you're a regular nail tech who relies on your monthly clients that are coming in all of the time, when you have clients that every couple of months feel like they need to take a break because their nails are getting thin or sore or whatever, it's gonna mess you up and you're gonna have to start building new clients to fill in that gap. So your clients are also gonna feel much, much better when they do anything if they have just a thin layer of Trinity on their nails as opposed to just a base coat. Most people's nails are not strong enough for just a base coat. All right, so I'm measuring. The way I do this is I'm looking from the cuticle straight down and I'm comparing the cuticle to the tip. And I know it's probably gonna look different on camera. So this one is just a hair longer. So you always wanna measure from here to here. Occasionally you're gonna have someone come in and they're, they might be, oh, this nail's longer. And they're looking at it from this side. That is not the side you look at to measure nails. And for most people, um, both hands are relatively equal. There are a couple of clients whose nail beds on one hand are just it, almost double what they are on the other hand. And you can't make one hand's nails completely double the other hand. So you almost have to make, you almost have to make an executive decision and go, okay, we're gonna make them a little bit more equal. Um, and I do try to also measure these two because they should be a little bit more equal as well. So. And those are, and they tend to grow sometimes at different rates. And so ring fingers tend to get longer faster. So I end up having to shorten them quite a bit more than a pointer finger on some people. 
you can see just how I filed into that. You can see how much thicker that nail looks now. Let's see if we can show you. You can see quite a bit more gel. Well, that's because of how I shape the nail. Always when I shorten it, I'm gonna thin out that free edge again and get rid of some of that bulk so that now we're back down to a very thin nail. So the, when you shorten it, you're gonna be shortening it into that little bit of arch that you've just kind of filed in there. It's not a dramatic arch, it's just a little bit. And if you sculpt nails at all, you're naturally gonna be filing a little bit of an arch into a nail when you file. It's just kind of the angle that you do it. You're always gonna be thinning out your nail, not flat, but at an angle. I guess I should show it this way. Sometimes people like it this way. All right, so when I'm filing, uh, here we go. When I'm filing, it's at an angle, not totally flat. So I'm filing totally flat, I'm gonna be taking off that little bit of arch I have. But if I file down at an angle, I'm thinning out this free edge. You can see that little bit that's gone quite a bit better. Alrighty, so here we go. Now they're all filed and prepped and ready. I'm going to use my cleansing mixture and just scrub the surface of the nail. You don't wanna be pulling all the oils from their finger down onto the nail. Just scrub the surface of the nail. Curry, fingers and curry. <laughs> yes, curry can be something. We were just talking about that. She says if there's any orange, it's Turmeric. Turmeric. So turmeric and uh, what? It, there's one other spice that I know saffron. causes saffron causes staining. Um, and if they stain the underside of their nails all the time, you can actually use a layer of Trinity under their nail if you wanted to. So you would file the underside. Mine are all dusty now. You would file the underside and paint a layer of Trinity on it, and it help protect their nails. So. If they're caught, like if they're a cook and they're constantly using that or something like that, you can, but I don't think I do a lot of nails on cooks, so it's unusual. Okay, so I'm gonna be using my Trinity Clear. I'll put this here for those who are wondering what I'm using. And I use my 106 brush. Pillow to the cuticle. So this is what Nicole was saying by leaving a week grow out. So if you try to get your Trinity all the way to the back, what's gonna happen? You're gonna flood the cuticle, it's gonna cause problems, it's gonna cause lifting. So I do just right up to leaving about a week's grow out for a gap and your color's gonna go there. So it's not gonna be like gapped forever, but it's gonna be a much smoother surface for your color to fall into. All right, go ahead and put that in. One, two, and out. And then you can read Nicole's thing. Uh, what do you tell your client that is going away for over a month when they are worried about the grow nails. And so they want to remove the color and make their nails look as good again on their own. Uh, that's not gonna happen. So if they're gone for, typically my clients are back within six weeks. Um, if they're gone over six weeks, they're gonna have to find somebody else. They wanna file their own, that's fine, but they're certainly not gonna be able to make it look as good on their own. It's just not gonna happen. Um, you can try to help find them somebody, but if they're gone for less than six weeks, my trick for grow out is fades. I do a lot of fades, so I'll do a solid color and blend it to clear. Um, and that makes a world of difference. So she didn't go in for quite two seconds. I'll count it the next time. So what happens if they don't go in for two seconds is their nail starts to self level and you could end up with product bulging on one side. Um, if their nails are leaning at all. Um, that's why that three seconds is important. Hers are luckily pretty straight right now. Um, but when she goes back in the next time, I'm gonna count just to remind her how long she's supposed to stay in the light. Go ahead. One, two, and then out. Okay. So that's gonna be the proper flash cure that's gonna make it so it doesn't move on you. My client is a barista. Two of her nails are always brownish. Yeah, so ultra gloss for her is gonna save her life. Like you can put white on her nails and she's gonna be fine. If the underside of her nails are also brownish, like I said, use a flat bit. So 459, I believe, is the um, flat bit that you can go underneath and find, that was, go back. She's not counting very well, come back. Um, 459 is the one that you want to do under the nail, and then you can do a coat of Trinity and cure it upside down. 
that's going to give some stain resistance under her nails and then use the ultra gloss on top. Okay. I touched her cuticle, so I'm going to show you what happens if I do that. I'm going to finish smoothing out the whole of her nail. I always go to the end and then I brush any excess off. Why? Because typically you'll see a little bit of product gather in the front of the nail. Then important, before she goes in, I didn't grab a stick. Normally when I grab my brush, I grab a stick because they're in the same bin. And you want to make sure that if you have, are we in camera? Kind of. Sorry, this angle is a little tricky because I can't actually see it. So if you get a little bit in the corner, just like that, right before she goes in, you want to make sure that that's completely removed. Okay, I'm going to help count for her. One, one two, two and, and then out. Your one, two is one, two. My one, two is one, <laughs> two. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, okay? okay? <laughs> and then once their thumb cools out of the light for a good five or six seconds, then they can put their hand all the way in and they can get the full cure for their whole hand. And that's just so that it doesn't get any heat. Just grabbing a little bit more for this one. I just want a little bit more shape. And use a little dark spot and grab that with a stick. And the trick is floating over the nail. If you are, if your bristles are flaring at all, you're pushing down on the nail. You don't want to barely be touching this nail. You want to not really be feeling it at all. And I feel like that's probably the biggest people have as far as, oh, go ahead. Um, the biggest problem people have as far as when they're applying is that they are pushing down like this. That is not correct. You want to hold the brush flat to the nail like this. I am going around and pillowing around the cuticle, leaving that gap. Okay, you don't need to get that close. Leave the gap until you're doing your color. And then touch the top of that pillow and glide down over the nail. Touch and glide, touch and glide, okay? And then come over on the sides if you need to. And then I always come down, see how on the front, it's a little thick, it's probably hard for you guys to see it, I'm sorry. There's like no way for me to focus better. But this is why I just brush down off the front. I always want that front really thin. Do you guys see the difference now? It was kind of coming straight and dropping and now it comes down at an angle. One, two, and then out. <laughs> and like I said it's really so that the product freezes in place and doesn't move while you're working on the next nail um, it's not going to get hot in that time so it's not it's going to help prevent heat when they go back in but you want it to be doing that so a, lot, a couple other questions I get often, um, do I finish file after this? And the, the answer is absolutely not. The goal is to apply this like a gloss so that you are able to get a completely smooth surface and go straight into your product. You can see the line of light. People ask me, what is the line of light? Do you see the line? My lamp is uh, straight. So when you look at it, you can see the angle of her nail and you can see there's some slight little bumps, but I mean, it's... Nothing that you're going to see once it's cured with color on it. Oh, Sujera says, thank you for giving me the Trinity class. It's the favorite product in the table. That is awesome. I'm so glad that you are still enjoying it. She's out there teaching it in Puerto Rico. I know your classes are always so successful. Let me know if I can ever do anything to help you. I would say that all in Spanish, but I'm not capable. <laughs> Someday I'll take lots of Spanish classes and I will learn how to speak Spanish. It would have been really helpful this week in Mexico. But, you know, I know baño, and that's important. <laughs> so again, there's a little bit, I can see in the line of light that there's a bump in the front. So again, I just want to remove anything extra in the front and then go straight in. One, two, and then out. All right, so... And glide from one side to the next. And then if I feel like I need a little bit more, I can grab a little bit more and then I just touch it right in front of that and glide down. It's always easier to keep removing than it is to try to keep applying. So sometimes I will just add more because I need an easier gloss. 
and it's easier to do that. And then when I move my hand over, if you guys are wondering what I'm doing, is I'm brushing off gel. So, all right, so then looking, there's a little piece of wind. Looking at the line of light, do you guys see how right in the front it hits that line right there? That means I have more product there in the front, and I'm going to brush that off. Okay, because I want that nice and thin in the front. Now it goes straight down to the end, okay? All right, go ahead and cure that. All right, so we're going to grab some colors. I have to try to remember all five colors that yeah, I have on my hand. All of them. I mean, you can do close. Okay, so I know we have the new Chi Chi, and it's the new Modern. And I did Fanfare, which is here. And I think that one is Celebrate. And then this one, I think, is maybe Exposed or Elite. Oh, um. No. Question? Michon, uh... Can you save this, please? I'm working. Oh, yeah, it'll show up again. Um, yeah, that's close enough. Um, yeah, it'll be on my page, and then I will try to upload it also to Facebook, so or to YouTube. Uh, at some point, I will figure out, and if somebody knows how, um, I will figure out how to stream on everything at one time, but I have not figured out such things yet. I'm not that talented, but at some point, I will be. All right, so... When someone wants different colors of all five, I try to line them up and have them ready to go. Um, I do a lot of ombre where people want like five shades of pink or five shades of blue. And so I get them all out, get them all ready, check them all with the client. And then that way it's, you're not wasting time just grabbing colors. So this is the new Chi Chi. And I'm really careful. Oh, she's been touching something linty. Um, with this first coat, I try to get it as close to the cuticle as possible. So this is where you're filling in that gap. So you're letting your color kind of fall right into that spot as good as you can and hope that it doesn't flood, um, which I'd like to say never happens, but it's not true. Um, your sticks, your orange wood sticks are your friend. But I try to get them as close as Michelle I can. Is asking, do you offer any clear builder gels with no heat uh, spike? So Trinity, it's not going to heat spike if you know your product. All gels, because of the nature of the product, even acrylic will heat spike. If you're using a good quality acrylic that cures quickly, it's going to heat spike. Why? Because those products are going from a liquid to a solid very quickly. I don't think this is the right one I used. Screen. No, sorry. Um, I'm going to turn back around this way just because it's easier for me to keep an eye on it. I think this maybe is daring. Yeah, that looks better. Um, so as I was saying is all products that go from a liquid to a solid, they can heat spike. Acrylic takes like two days to cure minimum, and that's for a good quality acrylic. But you can feel it. So if you put out a good quality ac acrylic and you hold it, you can feel it get warm. It does the same thing, but you're forcing a gel to do that same curing in 30 to 60 seconds. So that heat is gonna happen a lot faster. How do you prevent the heat? Thinner layers of gel and knowing your gel and when it gets hot. So this gel, particularly the one that I'm using, Trinity, gets hot at about three seconds. And I'm talking one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. At the end of that three 1,000, almost everybody is gonna feel a heat spike. So I take it out at two seconds. So one 1,000, two 1,000, take it out. And almost nobody ever feels a heat spike at two seconds. So that's how you do it. You just have to know your gel. So that two seconds is all it needs to set up. So that's how you get a good, um, a good finish without having to fight the heat spike is just know your gel. Uh, balance, enhance, they all have different times as far as like if I put balance in the light it may take three and a half seconds to get hot I'm not sure because honestly I don't use balance all that often I use it when I build a new nail 
um, or I'll use natural when I build a new nail. But I don't need to build new nails very often because my clients very rarely break a nail. And I don't do a ton of full sets. So, obviously, when we all came back from COVID, we were all doing a crap ton of full sets. I can't tell you how many rolls of forms I've sold. It was hilarious because nobody had done so many full sets since they were fresh out of school. I keep fighting this piece of lint and it's driving me crazy and it's causing my color to venture out into the beyond. All right, so that was, hold on, hold on. Never let your clients go in until you double check because if something has gone into the cuticle, you wanna be able to make, okay, now you can go. You wanna make sure that there's nothing going crazy. All right, so I'm gonna switch. So some is gonna be bright on the sand, which I'm gonna to go to this one. Nicole's asking, why do they say cure 30 seconds or even 60? You do wanna do a full cure is 30 or 60 seconds, absolutely. I'm talking about to prevent the heat, you flash cure it first. So that first time I go on the light, that two to three seconds is a flash cure. Once I finish the whole hand, they've all been flash cured, now they can get their full seconds. So once I do the whole hand, the client's gonna go in while I'm working on the other hand and completely cure the nail, 30 to 60, 60 seconds, whatever you prefer. I typically have mine set to 60 so that if for some reason they take it out, I still know that they've been in there a full six or 30 seconds. Um, can't over cure it, so that's not a problem. All right, so. See that little bit, there's a little bit of cuticle right there and it just got stuck right on it. So that's why. So yes, you are correct in saying that why do all gels say 30 or 60 seconds cure? Because it does need that time for a full cure. It does not need that amount of time for the flash cure. The flash cure is what freezes it into place and keeps it from moving. Um, does this work with color? No, it does not. Um, for a lot of colors, if you just put it in for a few seconds to flash cure and you come out, what's happened is the surface of the color has started to cure, but the underside isn't. And gravity alone will start to move it and you get wrinkled nails. That is the only time you'll get wrinkled color when you're working with Luxio. Luxio is a, a non-solvent based color. Whereas things like shellac and gelish and all of those, those are made with polish and a little bit of gel. And Luxio here is 100% gel. So when you work with a solvent gel polish, it has to dry and cure at the same time. When you work with 100% gel, it's only curing. Well, if you stop the curing process right at the beginning, like you do, you know, if you were to flash cure color, it's not curing all the way through. It doesn't happen where you get the wrinkling with Trinity when you flash cure it, but it, you can get wrinkling with color if you only put it in a few seconds. So always have your clients when they do the color go in for the full 30 seconds. You don't wanna do flash cures with your color. It could be problematic. So I always double check before she goes back in the light. Come back, thank you. All right, I think we're caught up. Keep asking questions, people, it's good. Can you get away with one coat? Technically, yes. And there's a lot of nail techs who only do one coat. I prefer two. I like the color being super even. Um, depending on the color, it might be a little bit more solid. Like this purple is just slightly more translucent with one coat than with two, which means this is probably actually a really good purple to blend for fades and ombres. What is the name of that pink? So this pink that I did here is called Chi Chi. This is from the new modern collection. Uh, this one was Elite. This one that I'm doing right now is Daring. Stinking black dog. Jade is asking, you can't cure, or you can't over cure accents. Not really, no. I mean, you'd have to cure it forever and ever. Um, you will find that with things like non-tack top coats, like Shine On and um, I think most non-tack top coats anywhere, we've tested them and you can over cure them to a point in the sense that if you put it in for too long, you might see yellowing, but that yellow will also dissipate. It, it absorbs the sunlight almost and then it goes away over the next 24 hours. So someone might see 
the nails being slightly a yellow tinge, it's not even noticeable. It's only noticeable when you're testing a whole bunch of them and comparing them, to be honest. Um, but no, I've, I've not seen over curing problems for sure. It's fine. Um, you would have to have it in for an unbelievable amount of time to actually over cure it. This beautiful blue is modern from the new collection, the new modern collection. Oh my gosh. Alexa, turn off the ice maker. Okay. <laughs> that screaming is an ice maker. Yeah, we I don't know why it does too. that. Does it scream at you? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. I, sometimes I need to, it means I need to clean the filter out, but it's funny. All right, so colors. This is Chi Chi. This is Elite, Daring, Fanfare, and Modern. Okay. So then we're going to talk about foils. I'm super excited because... So a couple of years ago at camp, so I guess three camps ago when we were in Baltimore, I believe, it's in August 2020, um, we discovered that some foil gels at the time, you needed to remove the tacky on the foil gel for your foil design to stick, which was like a revelation and totally crazy and amazing. Then all of those companies decided making it so that you don't have to remove the tacky and it sticks. So I'm like, okay, even better. But I was having a problem with some of my clients getting separation. Um, after a few weeks, they'll send me a text message and their foil will look perfect and the gloss on it looks perfect, but they've separated from their color. And I'm like, oh, it's really, really freaking annoying. I finally figured out why. And it's because one of my clients came in and I'm filing it. And if you file gel that's done that, you can see the foil just flake right off the nail when you're e-filing it, which is really annoying. Um, this is, Del this is oh, the combination is pretty. I thought she says celebration because we have one called celebrate. That's not it. Okay. Um, sorry. So I was getting really annoyed because I would see, you know, as I'm filing it, I would just see flakes just flying off like in my face. And I, I don't file acrylic, which is the only other time I have stuff fly in my face. It's when I have to file acrylic. Um, but I would get these little bits of foil that would just fall off the nail as I'm filing it, you know, after a month or whatever. And I finally had one where I was like, it almost seems sticky underneath. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I think it's the color. Like every gel, the rule of gels is that when you apply a gel, whether it's a color gel or a solid gel, it cures most of the gel and leaves a little bit as a tacky layer, also called a dispersion layer or residual layer. There's all kinds of words for it, but it's tacky to the surface. What is that for? That's so that you can add another layer of gel and it'll stick to it. If you're not adding that other layer of gel, then what do you do? You have to file the surface for the next layer to stick to it. That is the rule of gels. So typically if you are, okay, that's fine. Um, putting it in, did you say what colors you're using? <laughs> yes, I will tell you one more time, Stacy. as I tighten them. The first one, the brightest one is Chi Chi. Next one is Elite. I'm putting the lids on them, so it's a good time. The next one was Daring. And then I did Fanfare. And last but not least, the brand new Modern Blue. Okay. So what is important before I put on the foil gel? So I learned that foil gels do not like the tacky surface of gel polish. So I'm going to just wipe that off and I'm not giving it a major scrub. I have a little bit of prep and wipe on here and I'm wiping that tacky surface off. They're gonna look matte like this. That's fine, that's good. Then I'm gonna grab my foil gel. This is the one I just have on my desk right now. So Sticky is great and so is Quick Stick It. Both of them will work fantastic. I sell them both, I think they're both awesome. So I'm gonna put on So Sticky, this is the blue amber one. And you can see that there's almost nothing. There's a little bit there, not a big deal. I'm not super crazy about it, but removing the surface tacky from all of these colors makes a world of difference. That's why you see no problems with my nails right now. I figured this out and it's like life-changing to me because I absolutely love foils. I'm in a process right now of trying to get all of my foils into a book so that my clients can look at a book instead of trying to um, 
look at how they are in the box because just like this one, so many of them have a clear base and when they're rolled up, you have no idea what they look like and your clients can't sit there and look through 20 boxes of foils, you know, or you can swatch them all, but that takes a lot of time as well and then they're fiddling with swatches. So I'm making mine into a book and putting them in clear, um, oh, she bumped that one. Hmm, bad clients. <laughs> So because I'm going to cover this with foil, I'm just going to smooth that out and go from there. What's the other trick as a nail tech? Cover it with glitter. But we're going to cover it with foil, so she's not going to see it anyway. But that was definitely a bumped situation. She's trying to touch the stupid screen all the time yeah. because Facebook, their little thing where it eliminates and deletes all the words all the time unless you touch it is really not cool. And somebody needs, somebody high up needs to tell them that they need to bring back the not having to constantly touch it problem. All right, so again, once these are cured, remove that tacky layer from your foil. Super important. It's going to keep your foils from coming off. It's going to allow your sticky gel to work so much better. Amanda says she puts hers in a book as well. She's baseball card holders. Oh, that's probably totally even smarter because then you wouldn't have to like tape them. I've got to tape mine to the paper that I'm putting it on. But I also wanted to make sure that each paper had all 10 foils that come in a set so that if I'm at camp and people are flipping through them, they can see exactly what foils are in each set and they're numbered and all that. So I'm trying to make it as good as possible. So you remove the tacky. Okay. Apply your so sticky. Am I capping the free edge? No, because I'm actually don't really want foil at the free edge. Before I go and top coat this, I'm going to be filing that away anyway. So you don't need to cap the end of these. Just make sure your tacky layer is gone off of your color and then apply your so sticky. All right, go on in the light, please. Okay. So now I'm going to grab my set. So this has been the most popular set. Um, it's available online. I'm not sure. I can't remember which one it's called. So this is the one that mine are. But, you know, when they're rolled up like this, you can't really tell that they look like that and they're clear. So I did this one on my mom last night. But you can see all the spots. Do you see how clearly, like, that So Sticky takes it all out. Anywhere that you see a little bit left, it's because her nail was shaped and curved. But I mean, it takes it all off cleanly. And then with this one, I added a little bit of um, 24K glitz onto it. I've got someone else right now wearing this one on a light turquoise nail. And that's really, really pretty. She likes kind of that tone on tone, the dark turquoise, light turquoise situation. So that's that. The other question uh, your wipe and prep still has acetone, acetone. added 25%. Yes, my prep and wipe mixture is like 75% um, prep and wipe and about 25% acetone. All right, so then I'm just going to position how I want this to look and put it down and rub. So the, the so sticky has been in there and cured 30 to 60 seconds. Just rub, rub, rub. And the next one, I like to use the little gaps. Oh yeah, this one's cute. It's got some little flowers in it. It's super cute. So I don't cut mine off necessarily right away. As you could see with my mom's, I left it because there's still actually quite a bit of design on that. And sometimes I like to use different parts of different designs. So I won't cut it off until I've almost used all the design on an area that I want it to be. So it transfers just absolutely perfectly. Um, I try to start in the middle and then pull outwards to the sides so I get as least amount of wrinkling as I can. How long did you cure the foil? Um, I believe my timer right now is set at a minute, so it cured for a minute. Um, now, I do have people that ask me, what about Stick It? So this is my Stick It. This is not what I'm using for this. With that Stick It, that is great for um, doing metallic foils when you're kind of like doing metallic foils all over the nail and you're kind of just dabbing it on that is great for metallic foils quick stick it and the so sticky i find are not as good for metallic foils so i use both 
So you wanna use these for the design foils, your So Sticky or your Quick Stick It for your design foils. But still, if, you want, if you're doing metallic shiny foils that you're just dabbing all over the nail, you want to have your, um, your regular Stick It in a pot. I'm still in love with my accents lamp. It cures everything so perfectly. Absolutely, it's fantastic. It's got really high quality bulbs in it, which is really nice. Look at that, guys. So easy, so fun. Beautiful, perfect transfers, okay? And I just kind of mix it up, you know, use different parts of these design foils. They're so fun, because every nail's totally different. And you know, if you're like me, I'm gonna sit and stare at them and decide one day which one's my favorite and tomorrow it might be different. <laughs> I'll go down here. And let's see, so good to know I have stick it and foiled. I can never get a whole nail foiled. Yeah, they're different, different gels for different purposes. So stick it in a pot is a little bit it's almost like a wetter sticky gel. Um, if I want to come over to the side and I want just a little smidge more, sometimes I'll press it into the side, just like I would a metallic foil. So when you use a metallic foil, that's more how I do it, is it's a push, a quick push on and a quick pull off um, when you're doing metallic foils. When you're doing full design foils, it's rubbing it on. Absolutely, you gotta rub it. Um, but if I have just a little kind of a side that I want just a little more color, then I might just quickly press it and lift. Um, and you can get all the way to the side. I'm not as concerned with the foil getting all the way around the corners because I want my Trinity to go to there anyway. So I am gonna be using Trinity for my top gloss. Why? Couple of reasons. One, it's a hard gel and I feel like you get a little bit better wear with a hard gel as opposed to a gel polish top coat um, when it comes to something on foils. So why would you use anything else? Well, Trinity has bonding gel built into it. So it is designed to bond to the nail. Look how cool that is, guys. It's like perfect transfer. It is designed to bond to the nail. So what I might do is if I have this much where I've used almost everything. So these last a long time. If you guys wonder, how long does a whole set of foils last? A long time, because all I actually used was this much of it. So you can cut that off and then place it back in your little display. Nicole Any questions? Nicole is having trouble curing the thumbs separately with her accents light. Have your clients lift it. You don't, the reason is, so an accent's light, the bulbs are like this, okay? You don't have bulbs right here in front where you're telling your clients to stick their thumb and cure it all by themselves. That's why, because LED light bulbs are directional. They're only gonna cure straight into what you're sticking there. And if there's no light completely right under where you're putting their thumb, that's why you're not getting any cure. Take your bottom off your light, look at it, and see where the bulbs are. They're on the outside of the light because it's designed for the hand to go in and the light bulbs are right on top of it. So if you want to cure the thumb separately, you need to do it on the outside of the light where the bulbs are because there's no light in the middle. That's why you can't cure it like that. Very important. Okay, so before I do this, let's see. I was told to put in the center, but the bottom plate's not allowed to part of it. Whoever told you to put in the center is incorrect. If you need to cure your thumb up by itself on that lamp, the lights around the edge, it has to be underneath one of the bulbs. So you have to skew it to one side or the other. Okay. So right before I do my Trinity, I'm going to file around the edges. Even if I don't have product there, I kind of want to get rid of that sticky gel anyway. I just want it to go back to the color. Really, really light. I'm not going crazy. I'm just getting rid of any foil or any of that sticky gel right on the edge. And this is gonna allow my Trinity to attach really well to the color. It's gonna attach pretty well to the foil, but this is just a safeguard. I always wanna make sure that if possible, the Trinity is attaching to gel. Okay. 
Brooke says, thanks so much. Great info here. I'm so glad I'm helping. I love foils. And since I figured out, I've literally only figured this trick out like two weeks ago. And I've been wanting to do a video and I haven't had time. But I wanted to show you guys how you can have like perfect application and no problems whatsoever. Okay. So we're going to go straight into your gloss. And I'm just going to make sure I get all the way over here on the sides. And it's a gloss. It doesn't need to be thick. So I'll put back extra if I feel like I have too much. And then glide over the surface of the nail. And then I do go along the front. But I am going to totally take the very edge off in the end anyway with my e-file. So, okay. So again, and if there's little bits of dust, don't stress about it. It will melt. It's made of gel normally. So it's going to just melt right into your gel, you're not gonna see little bits of dust on the nail when you're finished with it, I promise. Otherwise, you would see dust all over mine. I feel like half the time nail techs take so much longer with what they do because they're so worried about every little thing and so often some of those things really make no difference. And this is one of those times that if you see little bits of dust, don't freak out. As long as it blends in when you finish your gloss, you're good. Is there a question? Comment? She said, I've been writing the foil struggle bus, so I think this will be, this will help. Life changing, my friends, life changing, because I love doing it. But I would hate when I had someone that would text me, and like I did these beautiful cheetah print tips on somebody, and I think my picture's even on Instagram, and she is a bartender, and she did go over three weeks without a problem. And then finally she's like, oh, I had one peel away. And she sent me a picture and I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. And so I figured out, and she was before I figured out, you have to take that tacky layer off of your colored gel. And now I take the tacky layer off the colored gel, no problems. I'm going to flash cure this just because it's Trinity. And I don't want it, when I turn her hand sideways to do the thumb, I don't want it moving. So now I can do the thumb without it messing up. There's a comment. Did you already read them all? Yeah, I read that one. Okay. She says, uh, I, this, I love this. I'm trying this today. Good, yes. Try it. Let me know how it goes. And then in a month, you can thank me when the clients come back and they look great still. I'm super thrilled that it's that that was really all it was, but it's just, it goes against our normal rules, right? Our normal rules of gel is leave the tacky layer, the next layer of gel sticks to it. So you leave the tacky layer and you do... Go and put that in the light, please. Thank you. She was about to touch her sleeve. Um, no, it's about to touch the screen. Well, it almost looked like you're in touch your sleeve, and I don't want sleeve touching when it's top coat. So I'm making sure I go around the edges again. This is just to remove any foil that might be right on the edge or any of that foil gel. And then I'm going to use my Trinity for my top coat so that you have your bonding gel built in with your top coat so that it sticks really well to the foil because it's bonding to it instead of just sitting on it like you might have with just a standard top coat. Ashley is asking any tips on chrome. Girl, no. <laughs> I still hate chrome. Um, no, my, are you bumping things? No. <laughs> she gave me this look like, no, but maybe yes. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, chrome, Chrome, I don't like. Uh, I would probably do the same tips that I do right now with this as far as I would file the edges. I would use Trinity as my top coat. Um, you're already putting Chrome onto a smooth surface because you're rubbing it into either like black stick it or a no wipe top coat. Um, but it's just the nature of the product is a pain. So if I have someone that does Chrome, I'm like, so you might want to plan on a two week instead of a three to four week appointment, just because I very rarely, when someone goes four whole weeks, have a hundred percent perfection still come back and it's annoying. And I want their nails to be a hundred percent perfect when they come back. And so a lot of times people will do it and then they'll be like, eh, it's okay. And what I typically do now is if they're like, I want like a chrome red, I'm like, no problem. I get out chrome red foil my friends do a red on red with chrome foil and it is going to be far shinier 
than a rub-on chrome pigment every single time. Same with silver or gold. You want a shiny chrome nail? Use your foil. Your foil is going to be far shinier than any of the chrome powders. Somebody's asking what foil is that again? You don't remember the name. Right? I don't remember the name of this specific set. Um, I'll look it up and post it in the comments later. Um, but I can't think of what it is. Go and freeze that for a second. I can't think of what it is in this specific set. I map over the chrome and then go around the edges and file Trinity and then Trinity on top. Cool. I still don't like it. <laughs> it's a pain. Um, it's also very messy chrome. And so I literally will get out my, so I have my, I'll show you in a second once I get this in the light. I'm making sure I get all the way around the edges of my Trinity, float it on, make sure it's good and even. Um, so if someone like right now, I have green chrome is the popular thing because it's St. Patrick's Day. And you guys, I had one of these sitting on my desk. You guys have a little lucky you. They're so cute and they work perfectly as long as you're using your flash gear. I'll show you guys that later as well um, once I have someone else come in. But if someone's like, I want green, I pop out my little green bin here and it has a whole bunch of them. And I'm like, do you want wavy green? This is from Dollar Nail Art. Um, I can't seem to find it to carry it myself, but then I have like the fiber optic green and the mini shreds and stuff. I'll be like, pick one. And then if they just want a soil, solid foily green, I have solid ones as well. Um, but most of the time they really like the shreds, something like this, cause you get a little bit of that holographic look. Um, and with these, you want to use the stick it in the pot. And you put this on and then you stick it over the top. You're not gonna have any of that separation like you do with the full design ones. Um, I just dropped something. Oh, I think it's a polish. Um, and then you just want to wipe these. Well, look, she was giving me a look like she touched something, but we'll see. I think she touched something on this one. She might've rubbed it against her shirt or something cause see how that's not shiny anymore. No, I was quickly putting it, pulling it out to touch the stupid screen. Okay, so if you're pinky or something, typically my biggest problem is pinkies lately. So I'm gonna have to I think, switch lamps. I'm always testing new lamps and sometimes lamps are not as good as others. So I wiped it, made sure it's dry and I'm just gonna put a quick coat of shine on. Let that go back in the light. The other hand has had sufficient time. So here we go. I hate it too, but they insist that's what I do. <laughs> I mean, mine insisted when Chrome was first the thing and then I did it with Chrome foil and now they don't insist as much because they really like how much shinier Chrome foil is compared to Chrome powders. I'm just gonna check the sides, make sure. See, sometimes you get a little bit of product here on the side, you see that? That's why I'm still hitting these with my file at the very end. I wanna make sure that every side is perfect and good. Not doing too much. And then, see, right here. This is why I always hit it at the end with my file. I see a lot of nail techs that don't do that. And what is that, what's gonna happen is your clients are gonna get at that and then they're gonna be filing their own nails or picking at it and you don't want that. So I'm gonna go back to my sanding band that I used earlier and I'm just going to come up underneath at an angle and thin out her free edge. You wanna make sure that this is nice and thin. There's another reason for this. If you have clients and their nails get dried out at all, they're going to peel away on the corners as it grows out. What happens when it peels away? People pick at it. What happens when they pick that nail away? It causes a lift all the way towards the center of the nail. So that step, even though it's just, oh, it's a quick step, it is a vital quick step. It's gonna prevent your clients from picking at their nails, separating on the corners, things like that. So always, always do that little step at the end of your service and you're gonna eliminate a lot of problems. See the one from Michelle. With stick it in the pot, I never had a problem, but with the bottle, I've been having peeling. So this whole video, if you haven't started from the beginning, I explained all of that, and you'll wanna watch this from the beginning and see why and how to prevent any peeling, because that is what this video is made for. 
because I had peeling too and I discovered the trick to make it never peel again. Suggestions on pricing for 30 day mani and foil. So I do a straight $10 for art. Um, typically, as long as it's art I can get done within our service, um, it's a $10 extra charge. Um, if it's clients that wear their nails really long or typically want art that they know is gonna drag over the hour because specifically their long nails are attributing to me taking the whole hour just to get their nail part done, they'll book an hour and 15 minutes. So you need to look at what your pricing is right now per minute. So if you're already doing gel manicures or whatever, you need to figure out what your minute rate is and then go from there. I don't do any gel manicures at all. So my gel manicure rate, if someone walked in and was like, oh, I just want my nails done for a holiday and they wanna soak it off, they're gonna get base coat, color, top coat. It's the same number of steps, so I charge the same as I do for my regular clients, but they're not gonna get that bonus layer of hard gel because they're gonna soak it off. So a 30-day manicure, in a way, is a bonus for my regular clients because they get to have Trinity as their base coat instead of a standard polish base coat. So hopefully that helps. Her nails are all done now. Hopefully you guys learned a few tricks with foil. Um, I love it, it lasts really well. I was just at the beach with mine and mine look still really good even though I started hitting it with my file this week. Um, there you go. Hope all is well. If you're $100 a minute, or a dollar a minute, sorry, $100 a minute, woohoo! If you're a dollar a minute and it takes you about an hour for a 30 day manicure, then your 30 day manicure is $60. Um, if that's for one color and for art, you can add an extra 10 bucks or something. So um, that's how I do it. I try to make it really easy. Um, I don't have this price for this art and this price for this art. It makes it too complicated for my clients. Do you appreciate it? That's just a simple $10? Yeah. Yes. Clients appreciate it when it's not complicated. So, all right, guys, hopefully that helps. Do you have any more questions? Feel free to drop them down in the comments section. If you're on YouTube, subscribe wherever the subscribe button is. And I will try to pop on sometime soon again with another little tips and tricks video. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.